Last week, Almost Live featured a sketch about the Mariners that included the line, these king dogs still suck. Now this upset the people who make king dogs and they sent us over several dozen to show that they have improved. And you know what? They're not bad. We've been eating them all week and we have to apologize. These are very good. But you know what really sucks? Dove bars. At least the last one I had seemed off. I don't know, maybe they've improved, but I'd really have no way of knowing. I'd almost have to eat a whole bunch of them to see. And you know what else sucks? Nike basketball shoes. Am I right, guys? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Anything else that yeah. sucks? Miatas. Miatas suck, yeah. The, the lobster dinners at Candlewick. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. that's Disney terrible. World. Disney World yeah. sucks. Gold bullion. Yeah, what else? Right. Cash. Uh, just cash, cash sucks. sucks. Cash. Uh, Paula yeah. Apple yeah. sucks. Yeah. 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 Which of the following bits is not going to be featured on tonight's Almost Live? A, a new adventure of Billy Kwan, B, a new episode of This Here Place, or C, a new episode of Bobo the Cheese Gargler? If you correctly answered C, you're a winner, just like this guy. Yeah, I, I think this is great, yeah. I think that all of us here are feeling an extra sense of excitement here tonight at Almost Live because it's King Dog Night. Yeah! That's right. We're, we're serving delicious, mouth-watering king dogs to our entire studio audience. There they are, there's the, there's the king dog people, and you'll notice they're Canadian jumbo hot dogs. I asked him beforehand what that means. It means that in, in, they're not only are they jumbo, they contain just 100% Canadian beef and Canadian pork. Canadian pork, so it's got all that, that good pork and meat products from Canada and jumbo-ness. People there are eating it. How do you feel about it? Real good, guys? Yeah, good. Yeah. So people are kind of, whenever they laugh or yell like that, they're sort of hawking all that Canadian jumbo-ness. <laughs> On to the next of the people in front of them, and that's going to spell excitement tonight. You know, it's going to cap off what's already been a whirlwind week of activity. As you all know, this past Wednesday was Metro Bus Driver Appreciation Day here in Seattle. And I guess we're all still buzzing from the celebrations. You know, I thought the fireworks display was much better than last year's. Actually, the event wasn't as big of a deal as it could have been. In fact, we, we called, we actually called Metro to ask them how best to celebrate Driver Appreciation Day. And the person on the phone said, well, I guess you could say thank you if you think of it. Sounds like a bunch of party commandos down there at Metro. Yeah. Well, we here at Almost Live put our heads together and came up with some suggestions to make next year's Driver Appreciation Day a little more special. Now, here are some of our ideas. For example, Offer to take the wheel on Rainier Avenue. <laughs> a good idea there. Before boarding, avoid a meal of spicy foods. <laughs> Applaud every time the driver cuts off a BMW. Yeah! It's the simple things. The simple things like that that mean so much to your driver. For example, let the driver know if your explosives are heat sensitive. Be sure to tell them all the shortcuts through Georgetown. <laughs> and finally, wear a t-shirt that says, Pierce Transit sucks, Metro rules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These, you see, these are just a few of our ideas. Thank you, thank you. Yell anything, yell anything at random that you want tonight. These are just a few. Oh. <laughs> Only kidding, okay. <laughs> We're going to need a cover charge. Now, I, these are just the ideas that we came up with, and I'm sure you can come up with some of your own because you're all caring, thoughtful people, the kind of people who appeal to this person. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into your homes, Mr. Billy Kwan. It's time for Mind Your Manners with Billy Kwan. Today's episode, Eight Ball of Fury. 
Oh, perfect. Uh. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, boy, pool. Wee! Wee! <laughs> this is fun. Wee! This shot is for a perfect game. Steady now. Wee! <laughs> Whoa. Whoop! Ah! Huh? You have ruined my perfect game, Minnesota fathead. Oh, so you want to play a game, huh? Play with this. Oh. Here, rack your brains with these. Center pocket. <laughs> Remember, boys and girls, behave yourself, or Billy will put you behind the eight ball. Remember, kids, be like Billy. Behave yourself. All right, behave yourself and stay with us. We've got a great show, and we'll be right back. This is the Hunter Gatherer Report with Og Brokaw. Good evening. Tonight, Bo Arg of Parched Gulch was seriously stung by a swarm of bees. Apparently, Arg was digging into their nest with his bare hands instead of using a long stick, as required by the Honey Commission. Also tonight, the chief of the Big Rock on the Hill Tribe insists that the dog people are foraging in his tribe's berry patch. A spokesman for the dog people, who prefer to be called the pronounced incisor people, countered with sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never harm me. No doubt an expression that will live in infamy. <laughs> now live from the split tree clearing is Bat Stomper with the weather. Bat? Thanks, Og. The weather for the savannah is going to be hot, hot and dry, and that is good weather for bird snaring. A hot wind is being forced over the area of the big food by the wind god, and the sun god is pursuing his daughter once again, and that should cause some excitement over the next couple of days. Looking at the map, we see that the antelope pelters, who live over the big hill, will probably have the same weather we have until the end of the rainy season next moon. Back to you, Og. Thank you, Bet. Now let's check in on sports with Zim Dwami. Thanks, Og. The hunter-gatherers handed a solid defeat to the big people today in a best-of-one rock throw. The big people got a lot on their pitches, but they had their control problems, killing seven of their own players with wild tosses. <laughs> Near the valley, the berry pickers inched by the bark strippers in a very close game of branch baskets. Look for their next matchup in half a moon at the Place of Loud Noises. Og? Well, for Bat, Zim, and all of us here on the Big Hill, I'm Og Brokaw. That's it. <laughs> Studio amplification for Almost Live provided by American Music. It's time again for home fix-up ideas on This Here Place with Bob Bobbin. 
Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome again to This Here Place. And we've got a lot on the agenda today, so let's get started. Gary's our cameraman today, and uh, it's a little slippery right here with the sawdust, Gary, so you better be careful as we come up. Uh, Gary? Uh, Gary, you okay? Uh, here, here we go, Gary. Let's come on over here now and talk to Larry, who's going to tell us a thing or two about how to choose a good piece of lumber. What do you look for when you're looking for a piece of lumber? Well, sir, you look straight down this uh, board here. You look right down the board. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and you can see how straight this thing is. And does this particular piece look pretty good to you, Larry? Fine piece, sir. Fine piece. This is like number one grade right here. This is real good. Do you pick these boards out yourself, Larry? No, sir. I'm not qualified to pick, pick these boards out. Then who does that for you? Floyd. Floyd? Hey, Floyd. Yeah? <laughs> You know, there's a real satisfaction that comes with woodworking, the ability to work with your hands. You learn patience. You learn Come how on. to... Uh, Ralph? Excuse me. Uh, Ralph? Uh, Ralph? What? I think the problem is that you have it upside down. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, let's walk over here now and see what Ralph is working on. And I think he's drilling into a piece of lumber, but it appears to be going kind of slow. What's the problem, Ralph? Well, I think, uh, I think it's pretty dull. Do you have any other bits? Yeah, I got this one here. Looks like my thumb's coming off, doesn't oh, it? Oh, by gosh, it sure does. Aww. Hey, by the way, how come you're not wearing that face shield down over your eyes? Isn't that to prevent chips from hitting you in the face and well, things? Well, well, we never use it for sawing or drilling, just well, hammering. Oh, can you demonstrate for yeah, us? Yeah, let me show you. All right. <laughs> you know, it used to be to do any kind of repair, you had to do a lot of hard physical labor, but no more with uh, the advent of all kinds of new products. For example, let's say you're going to fix a countertop. There's a product called... Countertop uh, magic. magic. Yeah. Or you're going to fix a cabinet. They have cabinet magic. Or let's say you're going to just fix some furniture. Of course, you'd go with the furniture magic. So there are lots of products and lots of... Uh-oh. Sounds like we've got some problems back here in the bathroom, Larry. Uh, hey, Ralph, you got the toilet magic? Let's take a look back here. Maybe we can figure out what's wrong. Well, I can see one problem here right off the bat. Uh, somebody left the sink uh, running. We've got to turn that off. Don't you fellows uh, practice water conservation here, Larry? Yes, sir. We got a brick in, in the toilet here. We got a brick in the toilet. How is that working out for you? Oh, it ain't working out too good. It gets, uh, it gets in the way a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe a better idea would be to keep people from wasting water that when you're finished with the bathroom, you just go ahead, you close, and lock the door behind you. So we'll just yeah. lock this door up good and tight, and Larry, you have Larry, to have a key. Larry, you got the key. I got to go. Yeah, yeah, let me see. I, I got, I'll see if I can find it here. Yeah, let me see this one. Let me see this one right here. No, 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 that ain't, that's not the right one. Let me see here. Yeah, let's come over here now and see what Ralph is working on. Boy, I got to tell you something, Ralph. It's a little dark in this room here, isn't it? I think we've got a dim bulb. A what? Dim bulb. What is it? Uh, nothing, Larry, nothing. What we do seem to have here is a stool that is a little uneven. Uh, what could be the problem here, well, it Ralph? it could be a loose nut end under here. A loose what? Nut head. What do you say? Nothing, Larry. Actually, I think one of these legs is a long, little long, so I'll cut it off, and okay. maybe you could hold the chair so it doesn't jerk. So it doesn't what? Jerk. What do you want? Nothing, Larry. <laughs> okay, so he's sawing off one of the... So, okay, well, now it's a little low on that side, Ralph, so he's going to saw from the other side, and uh, then maybe just a little more... Okay, well, now it's a little leaning, just... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll check back with Ralph. And let's step into this room here that Larry has just finished remodeling. And, oh, it is just oh, gorgeous, Larry. Oh, no, sir, look here. Oh, oh my gosh. No, look here. Oh, look here. Oh, no, this is oh, unnecessary. This who would do a thing like that? This is just unnecessary. Let like, it's calm here. It doesn't even supposed to be there. It doesn't belong in that uh, sentence. No, sir. And then the hyphen here, it doesn't belong there. Scum bucket. Two words. Two words, yeah. Two words. You don't need a hyphen. Yeah. Yeah, and then Brian. Brian's not a scum bucket. Joe is. Joe's a scum yeah, bucket. Joe's a scum yeah. Bucket. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's about all the time we have for today, but be sure and join us again next time, right here. Here's that stool. <laughs> on this here place. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the John Report. 
I'm John, here's my report. Far side cartoonist Gary Larson gave the commencement address at Washington State University last weekend. He encouraged students to take the weird and scary path through life. Larson noted that by attending Wazoo, the students were already off to a good start. <laughs> UW President William Gerberding apologized on Tuesday for saying that a Hispanic student was, quote, probably an illegal immigrant and was probably traveling on the freeway late at night at 70 miles per hour to avoid immigration authorities, end quote. Gerberding said that the comment just kind of slipped out. <laughs> Later, he explained, he'd meant to say, I'm just a big, dumb, middle-aged white guy with a little power, and as such, I'm bound to make an ass of myself from time to time. <laughs> Real estate prices in the Puget Sound area have leveled off in the last few weeks. Market experts have traced the sudden downturn to the day singer Neil Diamond announced he was moving to the Northwest. <laughs> A Boeing official termed the 737's tendency to have its pilot's controls fall out as a quality control problem. The same official described plummeting and crashing as a lifestyle choice. <laughs> the National Hockey League is considering expansion into Seattle in 1992. Sonic owner Barry Ackerley has expressed interest in owning the team and has already threatened to move the club to Albuquerque. <laughs> The University of Washington's new law school dean, Wallace Lowe, is the first dean of a major American law school to be of Japanese descent. In a moment of whimsy, UW President Gerberding joked that the new dean probably entered this country as an illegal immigrant <laughs> and probably with a lot of cameras around his neck. <laughs> I-5 southbound out of Seattle will have two lanes closed for another week for repairs. Officials say that if you're going to South Center, Expect at least a 15-minute delay, and if you're heading for Tacoma, you'll have plenty of time to change your mind. <laughs> and, and Robert Fulgham, author of All I Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten, and It Was on Fire When I Lay Down on It, has published a new book of his folksy philosophy. This one is titled, I'm Sorry I Did That in Your Car. This has been the John Report. Thank you. Are just like that. Sheriff, what kind of trees are these? Uh, some sort of pine, I guess. She was so beautiful! <laughs> Diane, make a note. Set my VCR for me. I don't want to miss MacGyver. Wait, I'm having a dream. I know who the murderer is. Will you guys get out of here? You're screwing me up. What's going on? You're, you're not dead. I'm taking performance art at Evergreen. This is my senior project. Now, will you get out of here? Diane, make a note. We need some pie. Gentlemen, let's go to lunch. Well, oh, I'm over here. Here I am. I'm over here. You know, that's just about all the time we have this week, but I didn't think we could finish out the show without thanking the wonderful people who have provided the king dogs for our audience. Thank you. Let's give them another hand. Here. Now, now, Dennis, Dennis, when we made that little joke uh, about the, that we said last week that the king dogs still suck. You took that personally. You wanted to prove a point to us. I, I did. We're, we're good dog people, and we wanted to show Seattle what a good dog was all about. Okay, and I, I see you've brought a comparison here. This is what, your common American hot dog? Is That's that right? right? This is the common American dog, hot dog like you'd find in the store. Look at this. That's a king dog. That's a Canadian jumbo. Now, why... Uh, 
Why do we have Canadian pork in here? Well, Canadian pork is a little leaner and sweeter than pork that you, than you get in the States. Like the money, too. Sort that, of like that, a third right. less. Okay, it all makes sense there. I hope that all, that all clarifies it. Anyway, that's just about the time we have left. The King Dogs don't suck, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Pizzeria Pagliacci, featuring traditional and gourmet pizza by the slice. Pizzeria Pagliacci, rated Seattle's best pizza. Promotional consideration also provided by your local Coca-Cola bottlers.